has uh, electronics wig out. <laughs> but, I, um, I, so hope, I, I, my apologies to everybody. It looks like, okay, people are already starting to jump on. They figured it out. Sorry about that. We had to uh, abandon ship on the last one. But here we're off to a, a start now. And uh, so I figured I'd kick us off by Sarah telling you how I found your channel. Uh, being fairly new to the internet, my viewers know I'm a bookworm. Every time I had a guest on, I'd get comments saying, you got you to gotta have Sarah on. You know, they'd be like, get Sarah on next. And so I waited to get, a, you know, a few more subscribers and also uh, waited till I was a bit more ready. I consider you to be a bit of a spiritual teacher, whereas I consider myself very much an entertainer, so to speak. So I wanted to, you know, yeah, it's, it's a yin and yang, you know. So to, I started watching some of your videos in order to prep for this talk. And I was so pleasantly surprised to find I got hooked. And the way that you describe things, the way you use your words, are not only uh, you're not talking down to people, but you're making it understandable to people who are having trouble with the, the conceptual aspects of spirituality and everything esoteric. And, uh, and it really is a blessing. And I appreciate you just as much as your viewers do, which I am. Thank you. I am one now. So oh, I appreciate uh, it. Awesome. Uh, I got some questions here from my viewers, but I would like to kick us off with one of my own because one of the videos I, I saw of you, you had said uh, about cosmic abandonment and how you don't necessarily agree with it. And this felt so good to hear because it, it hurts in a way to speculate that. And uh, people who hypothesize those things can be very convincing. But synchronicity strikes. After I watched your video, just kind of disagreeing with it, I started reading uh, The Serious Mystery by uh, Robert Temple, who outlandishly disagrees with Zachariah Sitchin and uh, berates very many people who uh, kind of uh, subscribe to this, this notion of humans being created uh, by an extraterrestrial race. And I would love to hear your thoughts on A, that, and B, how the worship gene came into us in the first place and how to eradicate it. So the person who you mentioned, I, I, Robert Temple? Robert Temple. Yes, ma'am. Well, I have an ally, finally. <laughs> he's on your side, and I got to <laughs> warn you, he's he's brutal. Uh I, I, I shy away from saying asshole, but in whenever it was told to that, that Zachariah Sitchin died, he said, and I quote, well, good riddance. He does not like a, a lot of people, but he claims strongly, and this book is very compelling on, on both of your guys' side, that we were here already, maybe tampered with by some bad guys, but... There's a lot of good guys, but nevertheless, we were whole and on earth already. Okay, so this is a, a very important point, and I'm so glad that we just cut straight to it. When, right. when the people, okay, first of all, Zachariah Stitchin, all of that thought form that's now just has money behind it in this age, which is why, you know, like, I'm like, oh, I have an ally, like, because, you know, but... Um, a lot of money behind it. It's a chicken or the egg thing. It's a materialistic age we're in. Not to fully subscribe or regurgitate esoteric Christianity or Rosicrucian teachings, but we really have lost that uh, juvenile form of clairvoyance that we once had, which is fine. We just go into different ages for different experiences and to gain gnosis within each phase and bandwidth of consciousness. But coming into such a materialistic age to where we lost our juvenile form of clairvoyance, now we have materialized everything. Yeah. And when you invert everything, that is literally, that's not my definition. That is satanic people's definition of Satanism. To, to materialize everything. And so when we've taken these concepts and they had some truth to it. You can be an advanced. Even the Pleiadians have said this, and they're not, they're not esoteric Christianity at all. 
There's so many different organic higher intelligence threads of consciousness, Steiner included, that we're able to see that having an advanced skill in one form, and in this case, it's being masters of science and technology, you follow that thread without heart-centered consciousness and full awareness, you get so blinded. You get yeah. blinders. You get right. such blinders that you actually do think that those people who came ultimately from the, the people, uh, Project Paperclip, the, those are the dark occultists who have essentially backed the things that Zy Zachariah Stitchin and the people who are now per portraying that, that's what they're backed from. Those people actually are masters. They have mastered a certain level of reality, but they have such narrow tunnel vision that they keep destroying everything. They're like the negative form of the Ouroboros eating its right. tail because it can't see that the tail is it. It keeps mm -hmm. producing its own destruction through its own arrogance slash genius. So it's arrogance slash genius. And then they blow something up and then they go, oh, well, let's say that we're gods of this new place. They're honestly the, the, they're the knight of wands in the tarot. They, they're hot and cold. They're obsessed with not being present and still. They cannot preserve. They cannot flourish. They don't know how to cultivate anything. So yeah. they blow it up. They destroy it. And then they call themselves gods of the next thing that they do. It. And they're all just the conqueror mindset. And right. that level of card conqueror mindset mixed with dark occultism is the fruit. It, it's satanic in nature by definition, not by mind. Right. They, they, much like the news and media, they take a speck of truth that is convincing and then they add their own narrative to it now that you're hooked. And now all of a sudden you are convinced that you are a lesser species and uh, I think that part of that might be why that might be the reason Zachariah Sitchin got so big so fast, because it came in handy, you know? Useful idiots all the time. People, people don't even know they're part of a darker agenda. Yeah. All you need to do is just have enough blindfolders onto something or just be very certain. That's why a lot of the times people come to me and they go, hey, is this person a psyops or is this person working for that? There's one person, I'm not going to air them out now because <laughs> whatever, I, 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 I'm pretty sure. You can sure talk about Billy Carson on the show. It's fine. It's actually not Billy, but. Um, I'm kidding. But that's so, that's little... so funny. You know what? I didn't know what was going on until I kept getting a bunch of comments. And I like Billy because uh, we, we have, you know, you agree with people on some things and you don't agree with them on others and it's organic. And every time you don't agree with someone, you don't go calling them a psyops or else right. that's just immature. Right. My, one of my favorite channels is Mind Unveiled. And frankly, I disagree with a lot of the things he says, but I love his videos. Yeah. You know? And you, yeah, totally. So, so the only things I knew about Billy were the things that I agreed with him on, like religion and everyone being weird and a worship gene. So I got enough comments coming in about Billy. So I'm like, what is going on? Is Billy setting the world on fire? What is going on? <laughs> so then I found out the other stuff. And I'm what's like, the, oh. <laughs> what's the other stuff? No, just the just the complete materialism of oh. an Anunnaki uh, yes. advanced civilization. There are it's gods profitable. type stuff. It's profitable. It's easy to sell. It makes books. It makes documentaries. Uh, Ancient Aliens is one of the silliest shows I've ever seen, and it is so popular. Yeah, and you know, like I've got I I don't need whether in my professional career or just as my spiritual soul on its journey, I don't need to point someone out to get a leg on them, to get popular, yeah. to, to, to be the antithesis. Right, I right. am only the antithesis if I see that there is a dark occultist timeline brewing. Then right. I'll then I'll play the okay. I gotta play. I gotta play the asshole. Fine, I'll play the asshole. But I'm not. I'm not gunning for that. Right. And what what I see is, is is that I do have to be a little bit on the stern side because there's a bunch of things going on that whether it's funded or not, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't even need to be. It, it's it's helping a very dark agenda. Right. 
even if it's through useful idiots, because as I said, there's only one person who I think he might actually genuinely be like a plant inside the the spiritual community. But everyone else is just organic disagreeing or they're useful idiots. And that's what the dark occultists do. They don't let you in on it. They just all of a sudden opportunities start opening up for you or all of a sudden you start get whatever. And it's because of the, you you seem to be very well aware of what a useful idiot is. Uh, why don't you let your audience know so that maybe they, well, <laughs> anyone who does it? I suppose I could talk about myself. That's fine. Um, no, I'm, I, but uh, well, I mean, no, because you're absolutely right. A useful idiot. It seems as though uh, if you are working for the government, for example, this has happened many times in the CIA. Uh, they will tell somebody bullshit. They're working for the government. Government tells them the bullshit. And then they put them into the UFO community and have them talk, give conferences, give speeches and stuff. And all of a sudden they're spreading disinformation without even knowing it. And that's where it gets aggravating because I would love to watch David Grush and just be enthralled with all of this this amazing new information coming out. And it, it's been a lifelong dream of mine to make alien contact or some kind of, it's a childhood dream. And now that it's involved the Pentagon and the CIA and the government and all that, now I have to look at it with a side eye. And that's, it's very aggravating. By the way, I'm not saying that Grush is one of them. What I'm saying is that it's so complex now that I don't know where to turn. So sometimes when I find someone that is very, very skeptical of everything, like uh, Robert Temple, or uh, even like Graham Hancock, for example, which I don't agree with all things of which, Randall Carlson, for example, there's a, uh, there's a particular type of energy or vibe that comes from certain people where they go out of their way to make sure that the information that they're putting out there is in service to mankind. However, I have seen people um, and I know I shouldn't say names or anything like that, but like David Wilcock, just he's the one who I was saying, I think there's ah! one plant. He's the only one though. Everyone else, I think I just sort of get, you know, I'm not going to go call someone something just because, but he's the only one where I'm like, I think this is a, a straight up plant. Some, one of my YouTubers sent me uh, a tour of their bookshelf and as it panned over, their TV was, it was on level and they had David Wilcox's book underneath the TV so that it would be level. And she was like, well, and now we have, we got Wilcock over here. And I thought, and she, that wasn't because of me. It was because she was intuitive enough to pick up that, that kind of vibe from him. And, uh, That's what and, my intuition like, for, well, and I'll be open about Corey Good, for example, Corey Good is an absolute fraud. I mean, a total fraud, uh, a, a comp- like, and I, I don't hesitate to say that at all. Uh, Whoa. I'm <laughs> this sorry. Is, no, this is fine. I'm just like, like I'm, in, I'm shocked. Well, I, I apologize if that does sound shocking, but unfortunately, Corey Good started suing people who were part of the secret space program, the same program that he allegedly was in, and said that they stole his fiction. That's what he said in court. They oh, stole we're thinking fiction. of the wrong person. Sorry. I thought you meant that guy who was in the Goonies. No, Corey. Okay. Corey Good is on the Gaia network a lot. Wavy hair. Um, oh yeah. No, that, that my intuition agrees with you. Yeah. <laughs> You're thinking of Corey Feldman who, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was, he, I, he might be weird, but like Michael Jackson, I think he might be, uh, onto something like I, I did not a popular opinion, but I think Michael Jackson was set up, but that's just, uh, I don't know. But now, now we're, we're veering off into left. Yeah, no, here. you go uh, back to what you were talking about. Sorry. I was like, Goonies well, actually, guys, leave him alone. He's been through enough. <laughs> that's true. No, no. I, I, I like Feldman. Wouldn't want to go to one of his shows, but I, I, I'll shake his hand, you know? Um, so I, I got a que- I got a list of questions here that I think are fantastic. One of them here uh, is from uh, Mildred uh, Milan, and she asks, "How does the philosopher's stone differ from Kundalini?" Oh, and I think this is a perfect one for you. So the philosopher's stone would be the fruits 
of Kundalini. And so this is a little bit like taking two different traditions. And even though they're talking about very common, if not identical themes, trying to relate them in their own context. So how to kind of synthesize those would be that the Philosopher's Stone is the eventuation, is the actuality of the Kundalini's goal, which I'm assuming goes doing, yeah. So Kundalini is the process. Yes, the yes. The Stone is the result, which yes. we, we all know that there's never necessarily an end result, uh, but that I suppose that would be the result. Uh, so on, I might add to that question, uh, it's been said that when Kundalini rises unprepared, it leads to psychosis. And uh, I understand that because when you burst through the chakras and go into the pineal gland, your your pineal gland becomes a receiver. And that can be very, very jarring when unprepared. Um, can you tell me exactly how drugs and alcohol might affect the reduction of the kundalini process and i am not asking for a friend <laughs> so i don't mean to sound like a broken record but um please you're, you're aware that liquors literally extract so they're not just like oh they lower your frequency that'd be one thing you know but quite literally they're an extraction that's what all that's why they're used in like everything, spagyrics, all of that. That's why it's so popular. Or yeah. so uh, given out. So literally what's happening, and you know, like, I think I had a beer, yeah, for New Year's. So I'm, I'm not so approved. That's kind of my question is, so by the way, you know, okay, this is tea. But if I go to Applebee's, man. I'd love to have one of them big, tall, dark stouts, you know? Oh, forget the alcohol. It's the Applebee's. <laughs> the Applebee's is the demon. I'm not kidding. One time I was visiting my shaman. And okay. she was like, let's meet at Applebee's. And she went down to Utah to go meet her. And I was like, <laughs> what are you talking mo mozzarella chip? Like mozzarella sticks? Like to me, that's what? not even a reality in my diet. That's not even like, I can't even see it. What? Okay, so what? back to here. What are you doing in my reality? No, <laughs> not, not Applebee's. Oh, God. <laughs> keep your Applebee's. <laughs> I will spend so much money at Applebee's. Oh, they got the blooming onion. It's deep fried. I know it's going to kill me, but it's so good. It's deep fried? You mean that you're eating gluten? Okay, new rule. Forget alcohol. If you guys just don't have gluten, no, I'm not even kidding. If you guys just don't have gluten, like, okay, try not to get your cities. <laughs> okay, I got you. So, so diet might be more important than the occasional beer. Oh, oh, one thousand percent. Really? Yeah. So, like, yeah, because Sumerians had recipes for beer. Uh, Egyptians drank beer. You know, and and it, and may, and so when I hear these things about uh, alcohol being, you know, the derivative of alcohol, how it's a demonic entity yeah. that brings in demonic things, and I see what alcohol does to people's lives, I I, I believe that to be true. But it, that does that mean complete abstinence? Well, that's kind of hard to accept, right? Well, but not once so much. you have mastered. Because uh, there's some things that I, I love, actually, about your frequency. It's how you already talked about the Philosopher's Stone in such an open-ended case. A lot of times people don't understand, and I say this with no nothing against it, but uh, some people just don't understand that uh, spiritual evolution, we can master things, but that it's a paradoxically always open-ended right. level of initiation. And so um, when it comes to m mastery, that's how I view that, first of all, just because I wanted to clarify that for people. But also when a person has that level of mastery over their, um, their affinity, so if beer has no longer become an issue for them at all, then now you've entered 
a threshold where, yeah, you don't have to be so abstinent about it. You don't have to have so much restriction around it because it's not influencing you the Mm -hmm. way that you see in alchemical uh, texts. Like now your foot is over the dragon. Okay. So you're no longer a slave to the alcohol, so to speak, that is, because alcoholism is very prominent. And once you've mastered that, you can now kind of use it either for pleasure or a tool. As I know, as I uh, have read uh, that the Eucharist uh, at the Last Supper, for example, uh, the bread was a mantia mascara mushroom and uh, the blood, of course, they haven't changed was red wine. I tested this myself, allegedly. And uh, yeah, it turns out that if you have psilocybin mushrooms with a little bit of red wine, it really enhances things quite a bit, a lot like uh, fruits do. And I and that's that's where I'm torn. I'm like, people are like, zero alcohol is the most important thing for spiritual development. And over here, you got Jesus dishing out mushrooms and red wine. So I'm like, ah. You know, well, well, at a, at a certain leg of the journey, you would need to be uh, we could look at it like tested. It's not really, but we could look at it like tested. If you can't handle not drinking. That's bad. Right. That's a problem. Right. Once once you can handle that level of abstinence. Right. Then it's it's something that you don't have to be so uh, rigid about. Right. And it can even help. Like like I was saying on New Year's when I was drinking beer. Uh, as you can imagine, I'm a lightweight. I went into like uh, channeling. And I don't mean channeling an entity or any of that. Channeling is our natural state. Okay. A lot of times people confuse when I talk about channeling. They go, oh, you claim you're sovereign when you're channeling things. Honey. Sovereignty doesn't mean you're an island in the sea of the cosmos. You're always connecting and aligning yourself with certain forces, whether you know it or not. Channeling is our nature. Right now, you and I have channeled ourselves into this density and dimension. Right. Everything so that, that, that makes a lot of sense. If we consider ourselves like the body to be the TV and the consciousness to be the signal, well, that's 24-7 channeling until that TV eventually dies. Yeah. And sovereignty doesn't mean that like you're not aligned or like you don't have affinities with with you don't have a spiritual team or a higher, you know, power and stuff. And so I think sovereignty is something I should start talking about. So suppose, yeah, I suppose it's, it's sovereignty is one of those words where you want to give it a definition beyond the uh, Oxford definition maybe even a spiritual or esoteric definition, because I've noticed a lot that individual words like a cult, for example, mean something different when used in context than, uh, than other words outside of, uh, the esoteric, you know, well, that, that was perfect. And, and I honestly, uh, now, right after breaking my heart with Applebee's, you uh, you brought me right back in with saying I can have an occasional beer. And oh, uh, it's altered consciousnesses. It. Like all of the mis- all of the mysteries did some form of substance for altered states of consciousness. Right, right. All right. So, all right, we have another fantastic question here. I love this one. Do we accidentally create louche with our movies and video games? As you know, our often very violent, especially video games now, which are not Sonic the Hedgehog anymore. Yes, we do. But what's more concerning with those is the programming that's going on. So we, we, yeah, Lush is something that is, unfortunately, yeah, like for instance, if you're watching a scary movie, I would say personally, Unless you have some sort of mental deviance disorder with video games, then yeah, you could really be a louche farm for that. But I'd say more so the video games are very strongly programming us to be in a sociopathic, if not a psychopathic state. That's what programming, that level of disconnection. When it comes to the scary movies, I'm less concerned about the fact that you saw a scary movie and now you've emitted the frequency of fear out for them. 
what's happening is worse. Have you ever seen or heard of the movie Hereditary? I've heard of it, not seen it. Okay, you guys, this is not, I know you guys probably are going to go watch it because I said that, but this is not a call to watch it. This is, this is letting you guys know that that is a dark ceremony being performed on the viewer. We got to be careful. It's like the cremation of care or something like that being broadcast live. I, okay. Yeah. So well, somebody I'll... watches like a scary movie. Yeah, I don't know why people would want those impressions of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre stuff inside your head. Right. Yeah, that that that's helping torture the soul. That's helping traumatize the soul. Right. But I'd be, I'm more concerned with the question that wasn't asked was some of these are actually dark ceremonies being. They're meant to. Yeah. It, what you're saying reminds me of my love for metal death metal even black metal music i i love metal and i considered a form of catharsis it's it's often violent and it's often i hesitate to say satanic but because that word has a lot of this way or that way but metal music is a release for a lot of people which is the opposite of loosh and that might be misconstrued you know that question by the way came from uh uh, Dungeon Crueler, and thank, thank you very much, sir. That was a great one. I got one here from a uh, blind as blind as hit metal as fuck. That's the name of the user here who says, uh, "To Sarah, how is your eyebrow game so on point?" Right. <laughs> that's that's your answer to it right there. Perfect. My, that's great. My dad's from well, Libya. His are just like bushes. Mine at least have form to them. Right, right. But that, I'll take that as a perfect answer right there. Uh, speaking of the cremation of care, uh, uh, Maximim Prowlix, I'm going to mispronounce all of these, by the way. Um, he is asking about the goal of the cremation of care. And, uh, and is it associated with the elimination of the divine feminine, which I actually I don't want to answer the question, but I watched one of your videos recently. And I uh, know it was an interview with somebody where you actually defined it like that as the negation of a uh, feminine energy into submissiveness or something like that. So it's more like the oppression of the feminine energy. Okay. Uh, and so I will be doing a video on this uh, on care, not the cremation of care ceremony, because you guys, I still do care about growing my following. <laughs> so. <laughs> not gonna do it on the cremation of care. <laughs> so many video subjects I've skipped out on. Yes, <laughs> I know. So, um, but I, but care's fair game, and so um, care's actually multiple layered. And I was talking about the deepest layer of that concept, and the deepest layer of that concept does represent the feminine. Now, when you go into the concept of care. Mm. In action, that's what you would get more like a logos. That's when you would get the embodiment of that oversoul, of that Godhead in a form that you can interact with. That therefore is an action. So okay. care becomes at that level that I'm talking about now and not the one that I'm going to get to and I'm originally talking about. Care okay. becomes you actually using the masculine energy to exert and to express care. That's, okay. what the, that's what the sun means. The sun is androgynous. Right. So it's the, it's the action of the feminine. It's that paradox. Right. But now let's just take it back to the form that I was talking about in that interview about cremation of care. Cremation of care is to strip the collective consciousness of the feminine to continue that oppression of it. I see. Okay, and I mean, that's why it's a ceremony. And uh, and it, it would make sense that that's something that happens nowadays, considering that a lot of things I've been reading lately, uh, for example, the Dogon tribe uh, is a perfect reflection of the way women were, were viewed long ago, before the Catholic Church decided to make Mother Mary into a prostitute via Pope Gregory. Uh, the highest anointed initiate in the Dogon tribe currently is a woman. And to become an initiate in the Dogon tribe is not 
not easy. It's it's physically demanding, and it is also uh, intellectually demanding, and it happens to be a woman. I can't help but think that this is a reflection of the way, because they're an isolated tribe. And the more I read into things, uh, the Bible changing women heroes into man's names and whatnot, Vikings who uh, considered women to be psychic and relied on them before going to war to know where the enemy was. I can't help but think that the cremation of care is a damn solid way in order to hold on to control because if men embrace their feminine energy or God forbid, God forbid, let women take the lead within the, the right brain type of vibe, we might, we might just change, I hate to sound like a stereotype, but change the world. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a non-war type of vibe. Whereas like, for example, Mars is a masculine energy. Guess who's the god of war? You know, it's, it's Mars, you know? And I realized that we need the yin and yang to exist in the first place, but the cremation of care, well, that's just point blank. Well, we know what cremation means to turn to ashes. And uh, I, I can't believe they're so out in the open about it, to be honest with you. It's, it's- Oh, everything is out in the open. And they, they uh, not only is that necessary for us to be a part of their ceremonial magic, but also they know these things. And at the same time, they're outright oppressing that knowledge from us so they're demonizing it while they're using it to control us demonizing it using it to control us and now you have in the spiritual community a complete blasphemy of these concepts everyone's so scared because of the gender clinics rightfully so wokeism is insane they're psychotic so now you have a complete opposite movement going on in the spiritual community to polarize everything and people right. are making their, their whole brands. Nobody's caring about integrity. Everyone's caring about making their brand off of whatever the heck resistance everyone else has. And so n- there's a blasphemy and an inversion of alchemy going on right now that it, if you turn to the left and they're just crazy and they look like childish, diminished in intellect people who are just having... A, a crazy like mental breakdown then on then you go all the way over there and you see people now not even wanting to embrace the other energy that will make them whole and truly alchemize them simply because everything we're seeing is a blasphemy and an inversion of the power the true power that happens when true alchemy is done masculine energy is embraced in women and feminine energy is embraced in that, but both, because I would say the feminine energy needs to be embraced in everyone, right. including women. Uh, I don't think that naturally just because a woman is a woman, that means that she has mastered her feminine energy. I see actually a lot of toxic femininity portraying itself as divine femininity, and I see a lot of toxic masculinity portraying yeah. itself as divine femininity. I, I, Carl Jung rings, rings a bell here as he says that every man's soul is female and every woman's soul is male. And uh, that is a bit of an analogy, but it's meant to mean that those things are, are, are to be embraced. And for no, whatever that's reason... that's actually a literal truth in Rosicrucianism. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So he might... That might not be so much a metaphor. But when I see uh, a lot of feminism... Uh, which I do 100% agree with uh, all of the equal rights and uh, power to women. But it seems as this feminine feminism seems to be that they just want to be a man. They want to have the man skills. That they, but they're really, really good at being a woman. We can't do the shit that women do. And so instead of being like, I can wear a tie and I can do everything a man can do, why not do all the stuff that man can't do? That to me would be that that's feminism, you know? And, uh, but of course, I, I completely agree with you, but there's two reasons why that happened. And dare I say true feminine power would actually be very gentle and compassionate to the false feminine movement that's happened. Sure. 
So how, and this is for, uh, uh, this is for uh, rightful feminine, but also correct masculine. In this case, divine masculine energy would go, whoa, who hurt you? They wouldn't go, well, what about us? We have it hard too. They would go, well, I'm not saying they need to pay reparations. A lot of times, dark feminine energy, it's not good enough to say sorry. They want a pound of flesh. Right. So, I, so I'm not saying say sorry to what I'm not, I'm not, gen, I would never be so reductive of this conversation. But for me, I've never had a problem just coming into this reality. There's certain things I mastered. I know where I need a lot of work. I've never had a problem seeing where someone's story came from and holding space for the fact that it doesn't take away from my pain to acknowledge someone else's pain. Yes. And I've been accused of a lot of things in the spiritual community. Being gay, I've been accused of a lot of things because I'm able to take such a compassionate stance on women who were raped. They were, they were raped. They were oppressed. There's so many different things that have happened okay. that caused organically that hatred that caused yes. organically, but that didn't even come from this age. Masculine and feminine have been fighting over every epoch because we have masculine ages and we have feminine ages. So in, so what's happening right now is actually the tables were turned at an earlier age. Women, women were in power and men were the ones who were looked at as being less powerful and the ages turn until we integrate. I see. So, so what happened is one, we've got a longer game story going on, but let's just stick to this game story. We have wounded femininity, very wounded for like a real purpose that came in that that's organic. Then you have synthetic because in this reality, you will always see that anything that is not fully brought to light becomes aware, becomes integrated and embraced can be used against you by the social engineering. So what you also have is organic wounding, but social engineering so that they can, because once you're already in a vulnerable state like trauma and pain, you that can be so capitalized so that any movement, even if it was, and I'm not saying feminism was an organic movement, but even if it was an organic movement, it can just be co-opted and turned this way, manipulated that way, turned this way. Yeah, right. I've seen a lot of the pages on on um, another app, not this one, because I I run into them on my on my feed sometimes and. I question who's running those accounts because sometimes people, and it could even be the opposite. It could be like a, 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 a man page, but I'm just talking about a feminist page right now. It could be, I question, you just see angry memes and you see no. things that have it's nothing vengeance. to do with true femininity. Right. It's vengeance, which it, to me is forgivable. Uh, and, but there is a reason for the vengeance. And like you said, to leave space, for someone to have those feelings is very important. Uh, and even though the vengeful memes and whatnot might not nece necessarily be helpful, it does help to give insight into how that person feels and why they feel that way. And but that's very- of, Totally. But a lot of them also, I do want to say, like, I feel like there's just purposely thought forms being infused into that community to- to groom their mind into uh, that level of what into calling that feminism. Right. Like, I think that there's people, well, I think for every, every type of group, I think that there's these fake accounts that are sharing memes yeah. that you don't know who's actually doing it, but that are actually trying to just, you know, poison the person's mind about whatever group that is. I, there, there's a reason I stick to these guys behind me as opposed to researching on the internet, because uh, not only will you end up repeating an echo chamber, but uh, a lot of the things are either false or infiltrated, so to speak. And uh, yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. And I'd like to add, by the way, don't feel bad for being accused of uh, being gay. You are not the only one. I, I'm also I'm also accused of being gay online no, uh, because gay. I sit like this. Oh, you are okay, yeah. perfect. Well, that that works out then. 
Well, well I, it doesn't I, work I, out I, when you're a spiritual teacher because people use that against you to somehow just oh. say that what you're saying is wrong right. because you're gay. Right. And so it, it's it's fascinating. Ellen how it undoes everything else that you've said, of course. Yeah. Well, they accuse me of being gay because I vape and I have sexual intercourse with other gay men. And to me, that's not quite fair, you know? But uh, but they, they have fun in Discord, and I, and I, I like to see it. So but, uh, the feminine energy actually had equal power, e okay. equal presence as leadership. It's a different kind, though, as you can imagine. Of course. It's not the same, as you were saying, that it's like women wanting to be men and thinking that the, the female power, high priestess, all of those, they were leaders. What's happening right. now is everybody's confusing everything so that now if a woman's in leadership, mm -hmm. Oh, that means you're a man-hating feminist. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Okay. That's, Peter. It, it, That's the karma of Peter. That's what he did to Mary Magdalene. Right. It, it, it's all the way this way or all the way that way. And, and oh, I, I can't stand that, that shit because everything has duality, yes. But there's a gray area. And the middle path of the Buddhists, for example, is so overlooked. And to be frank, even the Democrat and Republican thing, that's loose, yeah. pure loose okay. right there. No, talking about no gray area. If you even start to look over there, you know, you're, you're, you're banned. And, to, and well, speaking of Democrat and Republican, by the way, I think most people, uh, people pop up and go, oh, I'm a moderate. I'm in the middle. Don't even be in the middle. Just be on the outside, the orth cloud of that. Don't even, don't even participate in it because See, the I whole felt thing. Your frequency. This is why I was like, I want to talk with him. <laughs> I felt no, because I watched your videos and I, I, I had you. a breath of fresh air. I was like, this guy is an, uh, this is a spiritualist. This is an honest to God esotericist. Well, now I, I am. I, I, I believe those things to be true. But I also openly admit that I'm struggling with the whole thing. And I'm, I'm up, well, my Dark Night of the Soul video entitled um, Resurrection While Alive. Uh, it, it was, it, that was one of the earlier videos I made just to let everybody know right off the bat that uh, I had the Dark Night of the Soul and it definitely brought me to a level of of light that I did not have before, that's for sure. But in no way, shape, or form did I make it. In no way, shape, or form did I become complete because of that. I am still struggling in e internally with very many things. And uh, and it seems as if that just doesn't stop. There's no, when you're a human, it, it, there's no end game to it. I, I guess the Zen masters, had it figured out, but whatever they're doing is so easy to attain that I can't see it. And uh, my curiosity pulls me in all different directions, which is also a bit of a struggle, but I enjoy that. I enjoy the mysteries, you know? And, uh, but I, I, that's why, like I said in the beginning of this, I would never call myself a teacher because I'm a student just like anybody. Whenever you watch my channel, you're learning with me. You know, that's that's the way I like to to look at it, you know, whereas uh, some people I think are a little bit more born with the gift, for example. And I, I'm not trying to I, you complimented me and I'm not doing this in return just because of that. But you seem to have it uh, embedded in your DNA, so to speak. Uh, the way you speak about it is as if it comes natural to you and uh, and nothing against what I do. But I, you know, I make dick jokes and I, and I, uh, tell stories and stuff and it's not to belittle anything about any of this stuff. It's because I don't take anything too seriously and, uh, taking things seriously is it's all good, but I, I can't because if I do, that puts me in a position that I'm not ready for, you know? No, you're just a trickster archetype. <laughs> Oh no, Applebee's and now this. Uh, no, that's good. I'm a trickster. Oh, okay. So I, 
I might have missed this one. Uh, do you have a Do you have a trickster archetype video I out? Do. I'm gonna have to catch it because my understanding, and I read a lot of Jung, Joseph Campbell. Um, oh, yeah, Jung won't like trickster, but I do. Okay, so so I've read so far that the the, the trickster archetype is not necessarily evil, but ain't, is isn't any good news either. Can you can you? Oh no no no. Gurdjieff okay. was the trickster archetype. Hermes was the trickster. Gurdjieff okay. and Hermes, they could, they could handle the whole freaking ascension. <laughs> this is why, okay, people were commenting on my, Thar my Thoth of Agartha video saying, ah, yes, Thoth, the trickster. Yeah. I didn't understand that. Yeah, magic. Magic is always linked to the trickster archetype. Isis was trickster as well. If people are looking for a feminine... Uh, esoteric or a uh, trickster archetype. If you're a female out there and you want to connect with that power of it through the fin, I see. This was, yeah. So, anytime there's magic, there's shape shifting abilities. It's also the magician tarot card. Um, it's, it's when you're the positive trickster, you're able to show everybody the side that they lack. Everyone's uh, blinded by their own dogma or they're blinded by their own. They're, it's like a state of possession by your own ego. You can only see whatever is within the calcification of your being. The trickster comes to uncalcify you. It shows the red that there's blue. It shows the blue that there's red. It's funny because when I talk to people, I'm not even talking. I'm a diff different version and not because I'm being fake. It's because... I can sense intuitively that wherever there's, it's like ET, you know, like they, he's just pointing at the wound, like, <laughs> like whatever I'm talking to somebody, I intuitively, I, I didn't even recognize this until a few years ago. I'm, I'm looking for where they can be assisted in their next perception, not necessarily what I need or what I believe. Okay. That's, that, that clears things up quite a bit. And in a way, I kind of see what you mean by trickster archetype now, because it seems to be what you've done to me already twice within this, this talk. You have a way of completely dismantling somebody's belief system and then swooping in to, to relieve them and say, but no, cause you did with Applebee's and the trickster ar archetype where I'm like, oh shit. And then you're like, but it's a good thing. And so that, cause so the trickster brings you to the next level by um, a sort of a cosmic giggle, I suppose you might phrase it as loosely. And the ISIS thing, I would love to look into that because I've, I've, been, I've become very obsessed lately with the star Sirius B and the Sirius system. And ISIS, of course, was Sirius A. And the Dogon tribe had described Sirius B, which is invisible to the naked eye, which has just thrown me an entire rabbit hole. But so Isis being a feminine energy is sort of the mother in that case. And, and yeah, that's I'm beautiful. Gonna start videos on the feminine energy and care and things like that, since I feel like everyone needs that. Um, yes, but, absolutely. But you know what? That's so funny that you said that because I've actually, my guidance has been telling me to study Mars. So I guess you're studying that and I'm studying Mars. And then I found on your channel that you're doing a Mars episode coming up. So I have to ask you. I wanted to talk about this. Yes. Are are you from like are you aware of that Rush Limbo thing that like disappeared from his archives a few days after he announced it? He was blabbing his mouth. This was a way long time ago. When I heard about this, this was the first time that I ever cared about Mars. I was a part of basically what I would call now in hindsight a cult. And they were always disseminating information about dark things. And so like that came to surface. And then now I'm feeling called to research Mars and yeah. I'm like, wait a second, all those years ago, I remember Rush Limbo was saying this thing about how what we call in this age as Anunnaki or Zachary, all those things. Rush Limbo was talking about these psychopaths that had kept destroying every planet, anything they touched. They were so deprived of any feminine energy. They were the peak of toxic masculinity to where, yeah, they were expert geniuses, 
right. at one thing, but they could not see the whole picture. So they kept destroying everything they went to. And so then they destroyed Mars. Yep. Rush Limbaugh even called Mars at one point the jewel of the solar system and that they ruined it. And then they came here and they were the heads of Enron, of the military industrial complex. And that got deleted. But, well, but, okay. but the people had it. So maybe if you're, maybe you can find it somehow. Yes. Well, okay. I, uh, I will try to find that interview, but just to, okay, to spoiler alert to everybody. Well, actually, this isn't a spoiler because the video that I'm about to do is the mythology of what caused this. But so can I, can I tell you real quick my obsession with Mars and what caused it and why, why it ties into exactly what you're saying? And I'm so glad this is directly on the back of this book. Can you see this at all? Yeah. Babe? Okay. So this is the face on Mars, right? And this is a cluster of three-sided pyramids. And this is a weird wall. When you draw a line from the center of this cluster of pyramids, it goes to the top of the wall, goes through the eyes of the face. When you draw a ruler's line through the same center to the bottom of this wall, it goes through the mouth of the face. And guess where the solstice sunrise came up a half a million years ago on Mars? Right here. This was meant to be seen the way that we have set up monuments on Earth for thousands of years. And it's mathematically exact down to even this five-sided pyramid that points up to true north. And there, not only are these all completely some us, all of these on their own would be weird. But the combination of this layout is absolutely impossible. Somebody was there, and whoever built these things... This is what I get into later. And in I have a hypothesis, by the way, and it goes into exactly what you just said. But we do it here, too. This is much, much older, though. And it catapulted me down a rabbit hole even more than Agartha did. And I can't wait for everyone. I can't wait for you to see this one in particular. Oh, I'm looking. I, I, I'm so I'm so excited to learn more because right now there's very skim information. So I'm just turning to theosophy about Mars. Edgar Casey has said some things, but yeah. yeah. That, and that's where it leads is because the video ends. I, I lay out the evidence, but then it ends spiritually and what we need to do and how we need to embrace what we've learned from that, because that's a message. And that's going to be the, that, that right there is a message. The same way that the pyramids have a message of our place in the solar system, that, is more of a warning, like Gobekli Tepe. But uh, I, I, this isn't this isn't my interview right now. It's yours. So okay. So, so I want to let everybody know because you guys keep guessing my sun sign. I I'm not a Scorpio. I'm a Leo sun. I'm a Leo moon, and I'm I'm a Pisces rising. How's that? They're all gonna go do your birth chart now. Yeah. That <laughs> I, I, I'm I having Scorpio in my chart, like, and I'm fine with Scorpio, absolutely. But, um, oh, yeah, and then I see somebody saying Gigi Young has a lot of videos about Mars. Yeah, I need to watch them. Awesome, thank you. I need to check it out too. And thank you to that person, I appreciate it. Uh, all right, well, so if I might, let's see here. Uh, we got commission, okay, all right. Okay, so Romany Rivers, and she comments all the time, Romany, thank you very much. Uh, some of the reoccurring, reoccurring is emphasized, challenges on the staircase that spirals upward, in our, it, it can be exhausting. Uh, she's looking, as she says, any tips on those reoccurring challenges? And I might add to that, you had uh, said the phrase, new level, new devil, at one point, I heard you. And so can you uh, enlighten us a bit on that? Yeah. So about the reoccurring what? The reoccurring challenges that seem to appear every time you, you, you level up the staircase, so to speak. Maybe Jacob's Ladder is a good metaphor. And then you encounter, this is what I think she's asking, then you encounter these similar challenges in different forms. Absolutely. Until you master it. So... It's something that's, uh, w we may know here that everything is sound, even light is sound, not a Brahma. So it's reverbing. 
But when it's reverbing, it's at like a spiral staircase where let's say you're like, oh my God, the same thing. Okay. That's the, that's the truth of what more uh, fati means. Love your fate. It doesn't actually mean you have to love whatever the crap overarching themes you have. What it means is, is that can you notice when you are at one part of the spiral staircase, can you appreciate where you are on that spiral staircase by looking down and seeing how bad that theme was? Okay. This Rather is than like both, breaking it's cycle. Still the same theme. It's going to reverb. Yeah. So it's saying, look, if this was the fate and it's not yet turned into destiny, and the only thing that turns it into destiny is seeing how it can be a gift. Okay. So seeing how it can be a gift. It's not a matter of, hey, I'm rid of this. It's going, it's, it's both. It's Hermes. It's Mercury's. It's the poison is the medicine. The medicine is the poison. That is alchemy. Because it's the shadow work. Yeah, homeopathy came from alchemy, and homeopathy is a hair of the dog that bitch ya. Actually, makes your body resilient and stronger. Okay. And so, and, 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 hair of the dog that bitch you goes. How can I not? Please don't gaslight yourself. Please don't say. But I don't love this, and now I have to pretend I do. I'm not saying to pretend to love something. I'm saying that if it is what it is, can we appreciate? what it has turned us into? Can we appreciate the gifts that we have been forced into, whether it's being very um, humble or, or um, humiliate, uh, humility, seeing the humility, because sometimes we won't actually see the gift because our ego hasn't been broken down into absolute humility with ourselves yet. Okay. So you just like rung a bell with me that, is frankly too personal to say online, but yeah, uh, so the, 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 the antidote to snake bites is snake venom. And if you look at thymatics, they're fractals of each other getting smaller and smaller. So by it re these reoccurring challenges are simply an, frankly, unfortunately, an unmastery of learning from that prior staircase that you just came from. Uh, you're not meant to enjoy it. You're meant to learn from it and you're meant to integrate it into who you are. And once you integrate it into who you are, well, now that suffering has become a superpower. Or... or but it's not done. So that's what I want people to know because that's what intuitively I can feel is what's trying to be the goal. I wouldn't say that. And that's why I said amore fati. It's because can the goal be within the confines of that germ, the germation? The germation yeah. is what I was given, like my nature. I can't change my nature, but I can I can be the best expression of my nature. I'm okay. not going to go try to be Aphrodite. That wasn't my nature. I so see. I would suffer horribly if I tried to play out the fate of Aphrodite. But what I can do, sorry, and now I'm just speaking an analogy, but what I can do is say, hey, where's the wounding that made me Athena? Let's heal that. But where's the gifts of being Athena? Because I was okay. Athena anyways. Okay, right. It, this is uh, authenticity in its truest form. And I think you summed up the perfect, what I was trying to say about how I, I am not a teacher. Because if I was to take on the persona of a teacher, I would suffer terribly. So instead I embrace this trickster archetype that I naturally am. And and that 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 rings that rings very true. That makes a lot of sense. There's no reason to pretend to be at a higher level or to have mastered anything if you haven't. That's you very know helpful. What's funny, it's when I started my YouTube channel, my editor told me cuz he was helping me. He had ran like cooking channels on YouTube that had like a million. So he gave me some like some things. And one of them was um, always have like some sort of engagement in the middle of the video so that it'll help your stats if more people leave comments because you say you, you pose a question. So I would always say like, do you want me to make a video on something? And then I gave that up because I didn't need it anymore because I got enough generation of organic right. or whatever. 
But in the beginning, he gave me a few of those. And one of them he gave me was um, like, may, write your scripts and read them off of a teleprompter if you're going to worry about what you're saying. And I'm going to be left there with having to stitch together two hours of you stumbling. So I started writing scripts and reading them off teleprompters. I don't need to anymore because I grew out of that. But at the time I needed to because I wasn't used to talking. And when I started, I didn't know that I was going to be so authoritative. My, my I'm not claiming that, by the way, but yeah. All right. I, I didn't know that that was what was coming through. What was coming through wasn't even about Sarah needs to prove she's an authority on this. It was Sarah knows about really important things. Mm -hmm. And the larger vision is you're going to turn people off with how definitive you are. But you're also going to need to speak this way because this isn't about Sarah knows this. It's actually about you're helping people understand about the deception of Mars. You're helping with this and that. So I didn't know that at the time. So I was speaking that authoritative because my guide said, give the lectures like you've been doing this for 80 years. But now I know why. I see. No, we surprise ourselves. And I, and, and the same as you, I, I honestly, I can't, I still can't believe what's happened so far with, with mine. And, and I'm sure you feel the same way. And by the way, congratulations on, on running unscripted. I'll, I'll, I'll I, I, maybe I shouldn't say this to all upcoming YouTubers, but it's nice. Put some bullet points, some notes on a piece of paper, but don't read. It, it may be for, maybe that does work for some people. It certainly doesn't work for me. I like to ramble and it does make editing more difficult. But uh, I mean, when you ramble, that's the truth right there, you know. So, all right. Uh, well, actually, speaking of Jung a little bit, uh, let's see. Well, this person's name is TH2U88F. Um, <laughs> how can active imagination improve our daily lives? Are you familiar with the term? Yeah. Is that, um, is that Novell? Uh, active imagination would be a union thing. And by the way, feel free to say skip. I just thought that these were good questions. I didn't yeah, know that. That's a good question. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so active imagination, that's a Jungian. Okay, cool. In, in, uh, in, in Carl Jung's Red Book, whenever he went through his stage of psychosis, yeah. He utilized active imagination in order to overcome it. He had known what happened to Friedrich Nietzsche, who did the same thing and ended up not so good. However, Carl lived to tell the story, kept the Red Book in hiding his entire life. And then 10 years after he died, something like that, he, get, he, he left permission for his family to release the Red Book, knowing that it would be so out there. And it's one of the most frightening books I've ever laid hands on. Well, I bought it, um, the large, the very large one. Yeah. Um, two years ago. It's on my fireplace right now. And I didn't open it because I'm a creep. It's it's still in its plastic. And I've yeah. been looking at it going like, dude, this is kind of creepy. You should just like, like, what, like why, why do you still have the, it sealed? Like... I just still have it sealed. You but, don't, you, dude. I, I, when I touched the red book, I could feel it, and I, and and it's an energy that comes from it. And like, whenever DMT is very difficult to do because you have no idea what's going to happen. It makes you tremble when you're lighting up the uh, little thingy. The Red Book is like that. It gives off an energy on its own that frightens the reader when going into it because it's not about Jung. It's about you. It's about the reader. And that can be... He brings up the parts of you that you are denying through active imagination by letting his imagination take over and letting his imagination happen to him. He avoided his psychosis and I'll tell you what, it's not, it is not to be taken lightly. And uh, there are several points I had to put the book down. 
Okay. Like I remember having some looks at it at the smaller version. And then I bought this big one as a sign of like, Oh my God, my abundance. I'm so excited. I finally get to have it. But yeah. now, now I'm going to open it and like freaking, I don't know, like, <laughs> like go, go to town. But, um, how to harness that, that was the true power of subconscious. And that is a very powerful facet for mania. So what's being described as active imagination um, is an initiation, which you already are well familiar with because the whole red book is just one freaking initiation. For sure. To, yeah, the, the deepest chambers of the self. Right. for that individuation process. It's that, con, you know, coming of age through right. that. And so with that, it's tuning into what the Greeks call divine madness. Divine madness. Mania. Okay. Which I really need to do a better job at explaining concepts because everybody after I did my Gnosis video was like, yeah, I've had a mania episode. And they like, were like, he like. Like now, like, wow, now I look at it differently. I'm like skilled. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm learning as I go. <laughs> of course. Divineness. So active imagination is a part of what the Greeks would have just called by the different name, divine madness. And when okay. you're in that divine madness, that's an altered state of consciousness. Okay. All of hermetic practice, all of mystery school, really, you know, like they, don't get me wrong, they had so sobriety teachings like like how like sober sane teachings but then also they embraced all forms and altered states of consciousness active imagination would have easily not been the name they used but it but that could have been right. just in a different period of time a different name used to describe exactly that for sure so yeah that the question now that we now that we talked all about that it was how to like use that in your life yes Oh, okay. uh, how well, do we how use active imagination to improve our daily lives is what she, how she oh, phrased it. Oh, see, that would be almost like um, how to improve your daily life. See, that's why I thought this Navelle Goddard, because I don't see this particularly being a manifestation or like how to improve your daily life. I view oh. this about improvement of the soul. And then from there from that new vantage point, from that new level of development, from there, that will seep over into improving okay. your daily life. Does that make sense? That makes 100% sense because you can't change the without without first changing the within, as the without sure as hell seems to be an echo of what's going on within. I, I, I am a strong believer that we project our reality, and I don't mean that as a metaphor. Uh, knee venters, thank you very much for your donation. Uh, I don't think that the universe happens to us. I think that we project it. And uh, a lot of the things that we've spoken about today will throw us off course because everybody, most people, oh, static in Wonderland, you got to compete with knee venters. All right, I see. Uh, thank you very much, by the way. But uh, you, know, it, what, you have to become the philosophy before you can live the philosophy, teach the philosophy, walk the philosophy, talk the philosophy. You can't do any of that shit until you are it, loosely speaking, I suppose. Yeah, and I like Krishnamurti's stance on it because everything you said, if you replaced it with meditate, that would be Krishnamurti. He's like, meditation, like he was almost at one point horrified that people viewed it separate from their everyday life. Right. I, I've, I've always called it walking meditation. And, I, and, and by the way, I, I haven't seen any Zen videos from you, but you just said Krishnamurti. And uh, that's awesome. So I've got a series of Zen videos, and it, that's awesome to hear that you also dabble in, uh, in Eastern thought, which, by the way— this all is, but it's still called Eastern thought. This is the whole Zen thing is. Oh, and I'm more clear light Buddhist than hermetic at this point. Yep. I've, everything that I'm talking about right now, I, I'm in integrity, I believe. But at the end of the day, like when it's my time, I'm just going to go clear light Buddhist. And I suggest you all do the same. <laughs> Absolutely. There, there is you no... You have to drop all this. You have to drop all this and get clear light Buddhist when yes. it's your time. 
So yeah, if you try, you can learn all the esoteric teachings, but if you cling to it, uh, you know, then then you lose it, you know. And yeah, that's that's beautiful. Uh, okay, we have an outlandish question here, and this is my fault. Um, I I did a video on the Council of Nine and the Galactic Federation of Twenty Four Cedars, so to speak. And, and uh, <laughs> Cheralu. Sherilu Berimbin, sorry, asks, what are your thoughts on the Council of Nine? Like which one? Because to be honest, when you say the Council of Nine, I think of Arcturians. But then there's also a Pleiadian Council of Nine. So what Council of Nine? Based on it's one of my viewers, yes. That's what they're speaking about, right? Oh, okay. So I'm fine with councils, but then you said the Galactic Federation. So is this a council that's linked with the Galactic Federation? Because... I um, I do not actually think that the Galactic Federation, as it is right now being portrayed inside the this age, is um, as beneficial as people might think it is. Sure. But I'm still uh, and and it's it's hard to kind of traverse this topic because of course when I do traverse it and I kind of glean a little bit as to my beliefs i'm with great power comes great responsibility now i might not have you know uh, my own tv show but i still think that i have great responsibility and great power youtube is the new tv yeah so um i don't like just because i think something is off right Unless, like I said, it's something where I actually have to be the best, you know, I have to be the, the stern one because I right. think I'm, I'm not going to go around bashing other things. But just personally, I think that the law of one material is absolutely fabulous. It was a pivotal part of my own spiritual growth. I've outgrown a lot of the concepts, but the Galactic Federation in general, the way that it is now being portrayed is either one, just like not coming from the the law of one material it, or it's just um something that i've completely lost resonance with and and is shifted yeah. and formed to such a degree that um i don't know what you said about them in your video but all uh, i know i made a disclaimer that said that i don't believe everything i read but this subject is fascinating that's the way i put it okay so yeah so I consider myself, now I'm not going to go write a book about it, but I consider myself a starseed. Okay. So what I've noticed in the community is that there's just um, belligerence going on under the name of starseed. And so I've backed away from that, really. Sure. And I'm just, you know, like I'm a mystic. So I, I just don't really enhance the, the narrative of higher density being. Okay. <laughs> that being utterly just like belligerently abused at the moment. Right. And so um, that said, there are actual councils that have a very beneficial role for humanity. But then you have things that are going by those names as well. And this is perhaps where I confuse people because I'll say one thing and they'll glean into something that I'm not saying. Yeah. And it's just because I don't want to go bashing everyone because like I said, unless you're a like for sure plant, it's not my business that if I disagree with somebody that they need to be a bad guy. They don't. Right. Right. So, um, so for me, some people have been like, I don't get it. It, it. You, you call yourself a star seed or a blue ray, but you now are mocking that and stuff like that. And it's just because council of nine can literally mean a different thing. Because if we're talking about a council of nine, I might be getting from my oversoul information from this council of nine, but another person might be getting information and they're calling themselves a council of nine and they could be the negative trickster archon archetypes. Of course. Right. The, this channeling is not necessarily an exact science, especially when you're a human being and you're receiving messages. I mean, just like dreams, they can be uh, deceiving if not deceptive often helpful but you have to be careful and it's the same thing with someone just mentioned dmt it's the same thing with dmt it's not to be trusted i have been fooled with dmt 
and uh, and it, it that's a whole different story its own. But there are helpful entities. I don't know if they're us or if they're out there or not. I don't know where we go in that space. But I have gi- I have been given advice on DMT from beings who were pretending to be something that I caught on to and they evaporated. It was an ugly situation. It was very strange, but yeah, I, I even, so even with any sort of like divine, anything coming in, which by the way, does not happen naturally for me. I am in no way, shape or form like psychic or whatever. I've never had any of these sort of epiphanies, but uh, DMT is very effective at taking you over there. And if you don't have discernment, you will be fooled just like, well, anything else, you know? And but, uh, the, what you're doing right now will naturally, like, you won't be able to not become psychic. So you might not traditionally see it in a way, like where it's like Steiner, Rosicrucian clairvoyance, because he had such a system of developing those type of cities. But you are naturally in this realm and if you feel inspired, you might not even know that that's your psychic abilities opening up. Okay. So, all right. I'll, I'll tell you this. I don't do videos unless I encounter synchronicities. I, uh, I have to have things happen. And, and, they, and they, ever since I started looking for them, not looking for them, ever since I accepted them, they've reoccurred more and more. And despite not having, as far as I know, any sort of psychic development, perhaps you're right. And perhaps just by letting it in, it slowly starts to inhabit the being, you know, and maybe I shouldn't deny that. But there's been there's been a couple of times that a couple of videos I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do Dying is Perfectly Safe because I thought that video would. Well, I, I, right there in the title, it's. It's, it's scary. I thought uh, it would cause some uh, negative things out in the world that would be blamed on me. But then I encountered synchronicities that were undeniable, and it made me do the video, so to speak. It wouldn't let me sleep until I finished the video. And then it became, it was one of those ones where, oh, I'm no longer a one-hit wonder because of the Saturn video. Thank God, you know. So like that, it, it was one of the synchronicities are definitely to be followed and uh i've i've been a i don't know if that connects to psychic nature or not but it certainly absolutely has, you think so well yeah I, because the as within so without so a lot of times people want their psychic abilities and feel in lack of them without noticing that if there is truly no difference at the end of the day between internal and external then having messages received to us in the external is still coming from internal yes as as in a way as i had said projecting reality in a way every everything does and just as the buddhists the Taoists, and everybody have in that line of thought have said even in esoteric circles and hermetics and hermetics the all is mind so everything seems to be internal at source you know so uh well okay uh one of these questions how do you feel about contact with aliens through channeling? I feel like we've covered that twice now. But so K- contact K- with aliens with channeling, this is a very good question because oh, okay. the way that we're viewing everything that has to do with extraterrestrial is super materialistic. Even disclosure. I'm not saying that there's not going to be... Okay, so you might be familiar with the fact that we're entering into the Dwapar Yuga from the I'm Kali. Not- Okay. Yeah. Yes. The yuga cycles. Okay. That is by its very nature. Oh, but that's what we call age of Aquarius. That's the more modern term of that. The very defining features of the Dwapar is, um, celestial contact. Okay. So it's reunition. we're We're on our way back up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, I feel the same way. And by the way, you were you were about to say something else. I apologize. No, it's fine. Okay. But no, so I, I know. Contact, usually, yeah. usually I'm like with people who cut each other off, but I've been cutting you. Like, I think we're just excited 
to like talk. <laughs> I don't know about you, but like I don't get to talk much like this with people. So this is fascinating to me. <laughs> Perfect. I appreciate that very much because I have been politely accused within my own community of uh, of <laughs> interfering with the conversation too much. But at the same time, I've had a couple guests where we cut each other off. And every time we cut each other off, we were like, yo, yeah. And then we cut each other off again. And every, it was just a, it was a stepping stone up until, so yeah, it, it, you, you're passionate. We're both passionate about these subjects and everything. And I'm glad you took his question because I was going to graze over it, but. No. I, yeah. So the Dwarapar, man, I'm butchering that. Please forgive me. The, the Dwapa, right. that's what they say. The Dwapa is the age that we know as Aquarius and the defining features of it is celestial reuniting with our, with our star family. That's just a part of the nature of that, that this age that we're moving into that we're already like ankles deep in. And so with that, yes, we are being connected or contacted, but what you have is once again, this materialistic, this right. gross density force of everything. So they're making it literal t- metal ships that's how it is and it's like these people the the true like true arcturians true pleiadian true whatever they are not first of all even if they do have ships because i'm not saying that ships don't that there's no such thing it's just the lower technology so you already know who you're dealing with when they do come from higher technology it's not like that they're using the laws of the hologram that's why they that's why they're like they're not, they're defying our physics is they're not paying attention to our physics because they're operating from the laws of, of higher laws. Like they understand the hologram better than we do. So they don't care. They, like their things go like that or whatever. So. Right. I, uh, Mr. Mythos of um, his channel. It's my favorite YouTube channel. Uh, what's it called? Uh, um, Truth or lore just did a video on ultra terrestrials, which is kind of a, it's a term that is loose because as he had said, not I'm not quoting, but the vibe of the video was these ain't nuts and bolts UFOs. Yeah. In fact, the most credible accounts of UFOs seem to be of a spiritual nature. And he calls them soft UFOs. They disperse, they they disintegrate, they fractal out. And uh, th- this idea of UFOs being a boat with a person in it doesn't necessarily make sense anymore. And in, and in a way, that's us in our sci-fi age projecting that onto something we can't understand. The same way that medieval people called them fairies, uh, the Wanjinda called them uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Therianthropes, something that they could understand. We, we pre- it's, and it's, it's probably the same guys the entire time. And I don't know what their, their goal is but they've been here for a long, long time. And every culture that's come across them has painted them with their own hue, so to speak, you know? And I think that's what we did when, after we watched Independence Day, and then we see a UFO, and all of a sudden we're alerting the Pentagon. That's probably not the best way to go about it, you know? No, and, and contact is already happening, and it's easier because the age that we're moving into, um, we're moving out of the Kali Yuga. And so with that, there's that naturally, that like unity, as I was saying. Um, in Greek mythos that was depicted, the Aquarius um, was literally abducted by Zeus. He was just um, a, a beautiful boy, and Zeus just took him for his own and made him his water bearer. That is the theme of this age. It's that level of contact, right? Higher density being God going, abducting, literally gamma made. That's the Aquarian's name. Um, okay. So that theme is what we're moving into. And so with that, we can take that at a very gross level materialist level and just be manipulated because with the 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 reason why i keep pointing to that is because one could say that i'm in contact with beings but the the but the disclosure at that point and i agree with bashar about this bashar was talking about how um disclosure is just you're tuning in to the 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 forces it's not going to be this like here 
be, well, we don't want that. Right. No. And it hasn't manifested that way because there's too many people who have a higher vibration. We're, we're, they would have manifested it by now if they could. We're too smart for that. Literally. We're the ones that are becoming sovereign, that are raising our discernment, raising our consciousness. And that's why disclosure hasn't happened yet. It's because you can't work around it. We're getting too smart for this crap. So, right. um, but I agree with Bashar and how he, how he has said it. It's like, you're going to just feel, sense them. He, like wh- how he describes it is basically how I have my clear cognizance. It's just this, con- it's this communication that happens. It's not something that happens like that. The reason why is because if they're truly higher densities, they're on a different radio station. Yes, they, they, uh, they're not going to land on the White House lawn. That's what we do. That's not what, you know, what they do. And, uh, and, and what a relief that is, you know. And, and that's been the age-old question about, oh, if there's aliens, why don't they just land? Well, they, that's it, because they don't land. They don't do land. They don't do, as you had said, our laws of physics. As the, the, the universe is most likely holographic and which goes into we project our realities they're going to go through that they're not going to you know show up with laser beams and 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 harvest our resources that's been a big that's bothered me is that everyone think we go from planet to planet we harvest the resources no that's what we do that's what we're projecting onto them you know and so yeah I, i think disclosure comes with individuals you know yeah i do think that there are some bloodlines here though that have within them that level of um impulse that have that have the embodiment you could say of that because we're all here for different reasons And, and that's what i was saying earlier about how like did they create us No, that's what an arrogant narcissist would think when they came into a place and they were specialized in one thing, but they couldn't appreciate the specialty and advancement of another. So they created force to manipulate them and to tamper with their biology and then say, you guys were apes. Oh, really? We were apes? Yeah, right. Oh, we were, we were apes. No, everyone's accessing different parts of the hologram. You could be, uh, you you could have had the karma of something that was not actually at an evolved enough human level yet. But if you look at esotericness, we've tracked that. Oh, I watched your video. You said this too. The human form is on the whole entire solar system. It's not just the earth. Right. So you have earth, you have human here, and if you perceive them to be weak and your reality as might is right, you would paint them as being weaker and less human as you. <laughs> of course. Right. And, and yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a really dangerous mindset to be in for anybody. And, and that, well, that, rec- that reminds me of one of your videos where you said, if you become spiritual and you attain any form of gnosis, the moment that you find yourself as elevated above anyone else you've undercut your own uh your entire meaning in the first place you know uh and i think that's very valuable too because i've caught myself when you when you talk to somebody who they think that darwin you know had it figured out sometimes i catch myself going oh you fucking dummy but it's that's not okay to do they they have learned something that came from somewhere and that's where they are at right now. And, and I acknowledge there being more advanced or more evolved individuals oh, sure. than others, but that is not at the end of the day, something that should make somebody who's more advanced in one arena falsely crystallize their ego into that. Cause then right. now their growth has been stunted So it's about keeping that flexibility and that heart centered discernment of um, how can I, we're here for different lessons, but how can I refine myself from this lesson? Because a lot of times people think that the vibrational match between every single encounter going on is a mirror. And it's not that sometimes I'm getting something out of an encounter with someone else. Like, let's say, as you were using that example, somebody who's saying something ridiculously uh, fundamentalist. Darwin in that case, like I might be getting something entirely different out of that if I'm intelligent enough to be humble. 
intelligent enough to be humble. That's to me, put that on a t-shirt. That's, that's beautiful. Awesome. All right. Well, all right. So let me see what we got here. Uh, um, okay. Two more. I definitely want to hit and I realize we're getting ready to go on an hour and a half here and I don't want to keep you too long, but there's, I got, I got a couple more questions. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, this one's fun. The hidden books at the Vatican, are they for control or for our protection? Nothing they're doing is for our protection. <laughs> that is we're on cute. The same, we're on the same page. That is cute. Now, uh, now, there was once upon a time when getting into the subject of the Demiurgos and uh, the possible the, the possibility of us being a food source I had said on my channel once upon a time that I wonder if that information was being concealed from us that we are a food source in order to keep us from going into hysteria. That might have caused this question a little bit as phrased um, for our protection. But please elaborate because I don't think the Vatican has our best interest in mind. No, there, and I don't need to go into detail because you guys already know this, but like don't cry for them, Argentina. Like they, like right. you, there's oneness, but they're, um, at this point, the logos, the oversoul, they would love them to just learn their lessons and compassion. You don't, don't, don't false crystallize into hatred and separate con separation consciousness, but at the same time, yeah, drama. hopping into love. no, the um the amount of love that they would need in order to awaken would yeah. actually be what's called now as um tough love yeah. so, so i'm not saying to see them as so separate from yourself that now oh i'm grossed out at your path but at the same time tough love is how they will change their ways and it wouldn't even need to be where there's attachment to them changing their ways it would just be like look i'm going to give you this opportunity to change your ways but i'm not attached to it and what they're doing is is very inhumane very inhumane so yeah. i just want to say without without going into like oh discuss like it's so inhumane that if a person can maintain the level of oneness, but also know that tough love would be the, the greatest medicine for them, the greatest medicine. So if a person really cares about their trajectory, it would be the father form of love, not the mother form of love. Yeah. The love, be like love, love has a lot of different definitions and we use the word love for a lot of different things. And, uh, and I, there's a meme a while back that was funny. It said, it was like storm area 51, storm the Vatican. Like, you know, and it, it makes I, to me more sense. And it honestly makes me sick to my stomach. As yeah. you can see, the burning of the library of Alexandria was distressful enough even to learn about it. But to know that the same thing is happening right now in Vatican City is very difficult to actually and that might be why the question came up, because it's difficult for the psyche to accept the fact that the l possibly largest part of our human history and the story of who we are is locked away and sealed. And that's that's hard to uh, come to terms with. And that's I'm materialist. That's a materialist thinking. They don't, they haven't locked anything away from me. I don't care about whatever their gnosis is. I have better gnosis. Right. This 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 goes into uh, what a lot of sages, especially in Zen, say that your religious teachings and your writings and your scriptures, they're really cool. They're really nice and they're fun to read. I'm paraphrasing, but that's not where your information <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would actually be, and I don't want to say psyops because I say it too much. That would be the psyops is going. You have it. Give it to me. Give it to me. You're holding right, it from right. me. That would be the psyops. So, okay, this, this is beautiful because it would be more powerful instead of storming the Vatican and taking back what's ours to just know what is to say, keep it. We got it in here. 
And that's beautiful. I, I like that. Do you know that. what tricksters do? See, I was on Aeon Byte's uh, Astronosis Conference at the Theosophical Society. And okay. he just gave me my talk so that I could share it on YouTube. So I'm so excited to share it because I just went off for about an hour about how tricksters, the negative ones, not the kind that I was telling you about, Jurdef, Hermes, you and I. There's dual um, means, yeah. Yeah. Negative tricksters are always trying to trick you, even if it's like a double trick. They're just trying to trick you out of your power. And one of the tricks is by tricking a person into believing that they have the power to even withhold something from you because then you all of a sudden go, you have it, give it to me. You're never going to get it from there. Get off no. of that. Right. Nothing external. You know, there, there is nothing external that can make you whole. And, and it, and that comes back to meditation and it, it, well, for, for example, I, I consider meditation to be fasting from stimulation and that is fasting from stimulation is quite the opposite actually of receiving information. In fact, it's by definition, the exact opposite. And when you fast from information in the form of meditation, and it doesn't matter how you do it. And uh, that's another thing I've said on my channel is that. Yes, I like to sit in lotus position, and I like to uh, do these practices that Dogon, uh, Do, uh, De, Dagon, who's the master here? I, I talk about aliens so much in the last recent videos, but uh, yeah, no, Do, Master Dogon, he's just got a similar name, I guess. But uh, anyways, uh, he recommends lotus position, but it doesn't matter what position you're in. Now, the Kundalini rises better in particular you know, forms and practices. Yoga is very beneficial, but, uh, fasting from external stimuli is meditation. And that can be carried with you, uh, in your daily life. And, and it's a beautiful thing to embrace. And even going back to the thing about alcoholism, uh, if someone can't, as you had said, if, if you can't go without drinking, you know, that's a problem and a really good step in the, in that direction. Cause that's an external stimulus. If you can meditate and sit quietly for 20 minutes and fast from literally everything except for breathing, that's a good step in that, in, in that direction as well. And it's leaving, it's creating an empty cup within you to, uh, to find that, well, as they had said, uh, you know, a pond, if you try to get the dust in the pond to settle by making it settle, it's going to stir up mo more dust. You know, that's how I consider, you know, meditation in a way. And uh, yeah, from within and the Vatican can can keep their records because we've got it in our DNA, so to speak. Well, whatever they have anyways, it was sculpted because I, I've seen this even happen with masonry. You know, you had like Manly P. Hall, who I love. Manly P. Hall Absolutely. had source text. Manly P. Hall had so many, like, like a preservation of the ageless wisdoms. But then we see um, in newer days, and this is nothing against the people who are, who are sharing it, but they're de- occulting information from masonry now and it's okay. not it's not their fault it's not their fault they're sharing what they were they were taught and 95 percent of it is gold it is absolutely soul enriching but you have that five percent that shows that before that somewhere before somewhere after manly p hall but before now yeah there is still this psychopathic version of stories that is being like like a virus like it's being it just infiltrated into ageless wisdoms so as to still twist it into the story of might is right and whatever that the that thought form and those people that embody that impulse came from so even things that i learned from people who are like totally in alignment Still, I've learned that the true gnosis at a certain point, things can take you to a certain place until you get to a certain point. And we could call that a certain point of initiation, a certain point of gnosis. And once you get to that point, it's not that you only listen to yourself, you're only self-sovereign in a, in a very um, like rigid way. Right. 
you're open because you're always growing. You can't close that off unless you want to be arrogant. But, but you're able now to not be so dependent and you could see through whatever Santa Claus, like you're not worried about breaking what you were told by people in high positions of authority about what they were told happened here on earth or, or what this is control or this is the truth. So you can start actually uh, learning how to use discernment to go, I really resonate with this, but why did my intuition, why was it confused about that going on? I don't know about that myth. I don't know about this. I don't know about that. So you start actually seeing where there was such a deep insertion into the mystery schools at a certain point of this arrogant psychopathic threads that now we're going, what's the truth? What's the truth? And it's like, really? You're worried? Like the 33rd, the 33 degrees and how it relates to the spinal column are very important to know. But once you know it, at a certain level of reality, you can even awaken out of the fact that your pineal gland is where your soul is stored. All of this at a certain level of reality now, you wake up out of, although I respect all of that gnosis to get you there, get us there. That process is valuable, but to depend on it can oftentimes be futile. And I have heard that about, you know, uh, was this was Spinoza or uh, I forgot his name, who said that the pineal gland is the seat of the soul, whereas the Egyptians believed that our sentience was in the heart or heart chakra, supposedly. I would, I would agree. There, I, I would agree it's the heart center, and there's a difference I have between chakra and center, but continue. Actually, that's the – no, that's that's what I wanted to point out is there's two different things that – are two separate viewpoints, but hold on a second. The, 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 the chakras and centers. The, no, you, 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 you're the guest. What's the difference? I want to know this. Well, first of all, one of them is a little older. So Masonic, well, back to the Egyptian thing, because I want to start there with the heart. Okay. I would believe magi- Egyptian mystery school teachings over masonic teachings if they differ because you know masonry and I, i'm not bashing it pe- masons or whoever you know like I, I i love i've learned a lot i would be an absolute hypocrite or i would be very ungrateful if i were to sit here and teach and talk about things and say that and, and then bash where i learned half of it from right. i love i love masonry but if whenever there's discrepancies and the intuition goes at eh, it's mm-hmm. like, I know, nobody needs to tell me, I know that if there's a discrepancy with the soul is in the heart versus the soul is in the pineal gland, it's like, wh- which one's obviously where the soul would be? Right. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I, it's, 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 I, I notice a difference in my life whenever I make decisions from up here versus in here. And I can actually feel that difference. And I think the ancient Egyptians uh, were certainly more in tune. And it could be possible that despite how valuable the teachings of the Masonic rites are, that a certain infiltration of power and, uh, and authority has come in to kind of usurp the entirety, the entire message of it. Something that Manly P. Hall, of course, did not embody but has evolved into that. And to be frank, I've had a people who are uh, master masons contact me and say, the Masonic lodge has lost a lot of its, a lot of its magic, you know, a lot of its spiritual connotation. And I've also had B comments of people berating me, accusing me of being a, a Freemason and saying I'm satanic and uh I you know oh boy and I'm dude you get the same thing and I get that too I get called a man (laughs) just because I have I have a dope jaw and I got dope eyebrows (laughs) and people call me a man I'm like dude I'm five four like (laughs) and there's nothing wrong with men five four I'm just saying no no it's all good no that's it it goes to show you that the YouTube comments are a beautiful community but the yin and yang is there because they they pop up 
I've gotten death threats from flat earthers. I've gotten, <laughs> you know, and I'm not accusing, I'm not out here making fun of them. I'm just talking about the moon. And uh, they, they come rushing in and stuff. And it is to be ignored. But at the same time, this might sound crazy to you. I find it valuable. Um, whenever I see a paragraph that is just, it's very, by the way, this community, I don't know how I dodged the bullet. It's go, go to Y files, go to any YouTube and read the comments. It's about 30% hatred. Uh, I've got one in a hundred and I don't know how that happened. And even the community, whenever they see a hater, they comment on his comments and they say loving, beautiful things to this person. And sometimes it turns them around and I, I've never seen anything so beautiful, but, and also those comments feed the algorithm too. So in a way they're necessary for the, for me to know who I am. I, I have to have an opposite, and there they are, presenting themselves to me to show me exactly who I am. And uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I don't even have to make myself. I'm grateful for, for those very comments. And honestly, to accuse me of being a satanic Freemason is at least to say that I kind of know what I'm talking about a little bit, you know. But uh, I'm not part of any religious groups, sects cults or masonic lodges uh that well i work in construction so i am in architecture but we have come along far flung from what we used to build once upon a time the stonemasons might do glass now but the spirituality has left that community and now we got guys named larry who likes to drink beer and watch football and it's beautiful and it's it's and it's okay. And uh so yeah, and that kind of goes with what you're saying about these these levels that come up and down, you know. Uh people associate Freemasonry with uh well here, let me put it like this. Let's say you go to a crystal shop and you see a guy spouting off, going, raise your vibration. Everyone needs to raise their vibration, right? He's he's correct. But then if you see if you're on the job site in construction and you see Larry with his beer gut telling a, a dick joke, who's more Buddha? You know, and I, I can't help but feel like that uh that 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 goes along with the New Age movement is beautiful, but some people twist it and some people like to use it to their advantage, and some people use it to level themselves up in ways that are just ego and it's unignorable. Yeah. The spiritual field can just be a, a, a pool of neurosis sometimes with, ev with anything. Um, that's like anything. And uh, that's what I've noticed um, that we're all here developing. We're not all at the same level. And I'm not even saying there's a, you know, I'm not even going into that from a superiority complex. I'm just saying that, it's like the Dunning-Kruger effect. Like the okay. Dunning-Kruger effect is that the more intelligent you are, the more you don't think you're intelligent, you can't see your own reflection of your intelligence because you um, know how much you don't know. Whereas the people who are so freaking sure, the most fundamentalists are, are the loudest or the ones that are the most closed off. And so we're, we're all here and we're learning everything from multiple different things about what makes us up. Our astrology is shaping us. Our gender is shaping us. Our spiritual intention for the incarnation is shaping us. Our human design, or if people don't subscribe to that, whatever you would, but we run energy differently. So that's why I subscribe to human design because I've noticed that I run energy differently than other people. So however we run energy, all these different things are feeding into an undeniable dharma. And we don't need to, but look at how Dharma got turned into a caste system. There's always going to be these different layers uh, that, that of maturity. And at the densest layer, at the dumbest, what I call the fundamental layer, you can turn something like Dharma into something as cruel as a caste system. 
Yeah. You could do that with anything. You could do that with crystals. You could do that with vibration. You could do that with something completely opposite from that. There's always going to be that profane. Right. I, I'm, I love that you brought up the, the Dunning-Kruger effect. And uh, in a way, it relieves me. Uh, I, I get the shakes. I get nervous. Every time I have a premiere, I almost feel like this, I want to end the description. Disclaimer. I don't, you know, this is, this is entertainment. I, I want to get, I, I just, I get nervous before this interview. I was nervous. Like I, I, I I'm like, are you really going to put out in the world a video about the moon being hollow? Are you out of your fucking mind? What are people going to think of you? I self doubt. I think more than anybody I know. Meanwhile, I flip on YouTube and there's somebody like, uh, the queen of England is a reptile and we're, positive of and they are absolutely sure and man i, I think she I, is a reptile but go on yeah. <laughs> i get your point <laughs> okay stop stop everything talk about that let's go wait no hold on is this gonna get me deleted off my demonetized yeah, let, yeah let's not i just the i i i think certain things and yeah there's um, all right I, but, I, I know that we should refrain from talking about the, uh, you know, the, uh, the C-L-I-N-T-O-Ns, but um, sorry. If, uh, I'm like trying to spell in my head. <laughs> That's I don't know if we can say the, the president's, former president's wife and the foundation that they have, but. Uh, well, I'm just assuming we don't need to. We're talking to an yeah. audience that likes me and you. So we don't need to like, yeah. I I have a paranoia that there's AI algorithmic machines that pick up certain words in a row that will shadow ban a channel uh, without notification. And uh, for example, David Icke, who I adore. I adore him too. I am not, right, right. So I'm not allowed to adore David Icke. I love David Icke. Okay, do I agree with what he says? Not all of it. In fact, not most of it. But man, he is he is wonderful. And uh and he by the way also absolutely sure of himself. You know, his confidence is through the roof and he's got a lot to teach. And a lot of my Saturn video came from his work, you know, uh refreshing Oh, okay. Oh, you, so you didn't see the Saturn video. No. So by the way, thank you. I want to thank you for not watching that one. It's going on a million views and, um, oh. it's, oh, it haunts me to this day. Every time I put out a video, that video goes viral. If I put out a video that does go viral, the Saturn video goes viral. If I have put out a video that does decent, the Saturn video goes viral. It gets, I can't keep up with it anymore. And I have a okay, I'm doing Saturn. I'm doing Saturn tomorrow. Okay, well, yeah. So it's the, 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 it, the, the video is about the black cube and the flea experiment. But people watch the first five minutes of the video sometimes. Now, by the way, I've gotten a lot of subscribers from that video. A lot of people love the video. The comments are incredible. They inspire me every day. Can't stress that enough. But some people see the first part of the video. I talk about the hexagon at the top of Saturn and I accidentally call it a hexagram. And oh my goodness, did I learn a hard lesson from YouTube that way? Because I leave the comments, by the way, and I even respond to them. I say, oops, I, I'm sorry. But a lot of people are very, very heinous, angry. I called it a hexagram. And that's my bad. But there is a hexagon at the North Pole of Saturn. And ancient people like the Dogon tribe of Sirius B seemed to know that. And it blows my mind. However, doesn't matter how much content I put in the video. I called it a hexagram. So I. (laughs) I know how that I know how that feels. But yours went viral. So that must. Well, and, and maybe it's those comments that helped boost it because that's the one video that the the lovingness in the community uh, has a little bit more trouble keeping up with because they they 
man, they, they find an error. You, you call, you mispronounce their favorite word. Oh, oh boy. And by the way, when you said uh, engage with the audience in the, in the middle of a video, when I mispronounce a word and I, when I'm doing my videos, I leave it in because it causes people mostly lovingly to correct my pronunciation and it, in, it, and it adds engagement. And, uh, and the same as my son interrupting the videos, my kitties, and uh, th these different things that happen organically in my videos, I leave in the bloopers and I don't save them for a reel because uh, that creates engagement. People comment on it. And it wasn't meant for that reason. I wanted to be real. I wanted the channel to feel like you're in my home and that we're having a conversation just like we are right now, you know, but uh, I leave the mistakes in and I don't edit them out. And I also don't regret doing so. The closest I've ever felt about it was calling a hexagon a hexagram, but People love sacred geometry and they get very sensitive about it. I love sacred geometry too. But when so, when I watch a video and someone says Carl Jung, I don't leave a comment. It's okay. They read it. They read, they didn't hear it. They read it. That's in fact, you know what? I'm going to listen to the person who says Jung instead of you because I know that they read that word instead of hearing it and making an echo chamber from another video. That's just my take. Mispronounce the words. They're mouth noises. It's all good. It doesn't matter. But uh, uh, that, I went off on a rant just now. Some of that might be inner, inner anger. That might be shadow. I don't know. No, you just needed to process. And that's fine. I mean, at least I don't know about your viewers. It's fine for me because I need that sometimes. So right. I'm happy. The, to the viewers love my, my viewers love the, the imperfections. You know, um, I, I think there was uh, even once upon a time that I uh, I got a fact wrong that I was corrected on, and I said I said thank you for the correction, and then on, on that I actually did edit that out because unlike pronouncing a word wrong, I don't want there to be anything wrong. By the way, YouTube has a feature you can whoop, you can snip something out of the video after you upload it. I don't use it except for the one time. And I forgot what it was that I said, but it was incorrect. But like I said, I wasn't going from a script. I was, uh, I was yapping, you know, you just reminded me, you said something about the YouTube algorithm picking up certain words. Now this is funny because when I tune in to the YouTube algorithm and I understand algorithms a fickle thing so we could think whatever we want about it and have our own connection to it but the funny part is, is is that yeah my views have suddenly gone down even though my reach has gone up even though I have more followers all of a sudden so I, I'm not saying this with delusional I, I am aware that there's such a thing as there being oh that's funny. I, I I have such a large following, and then this many get it gets turned to. I I hear comments all the time from people saying, "I'm not getting your stuff," and I'm subscribed and all that stuff. But even with all of that, there's this funny thing that's happened. I don't take it personal. Right. I I'm tuning in. Right. And like you know how you said like the technical difficulties and how that might have something to do with wanting to stop us. I think it's just because some some error, like oh for the sure, YouTube algorithm. I'm it was a joke made from a commenter that I found to be yeah. I think it was Kriegon actually, but, but I uh, find the algorithm to actually have a level of divinity to it, and it's funny yeah. because even though I I speak all, all of my topics, I try not to talk about dark forces, and then every week. I end up just talking about that. Same, so yeah. even though I say all of that, I'm like not in, f and I don't think you're coming from fear, but like I, I'm not actually thinking that things are against me. Right. And because if you think that it will be, you know, uh, but and, even oh. the algorithm, like I see that I could paint, I could project onto it things that are of a limiting or restrictive or oppressing nature. But when I tune into it, mm -hmm. it's actually 
wanting me to do something differently that's coming from a divine higher into yeah. intelligence Perfect. and when i look into that i notice that i can actually be myself i can actually say what i want to say but i'll have to align myself in a certain way while i'm doing it and then it's okay with me it's not going to show my stuff to i'm not going to win the lotto on it but it's not oppressing me I, I 100% agree with that, and I have a perfect example uh, of, of recently. A lot of you guys watching right now remember the, the big Thoth of Agartha premiere. Uh, we, we always, on this channel, we have a live premiere, and we always chat before and after the premiere. During the premiere, this time, at 18 minutes of, of what I felt was my biggest video, it, it shut off. The live chat, everybody started, what the happened? Why? What happened? It went black. And then no one, the video was gone. So obviously the conspiracy started in the chat before the chat also went away, disappeared, right? I went online and my video was uploaded and it was there. Everybody had to start over, but the premiere was ruined, right? The conspiracies flooded in. They're trying to stop you from talking about Agartha, all this blah, blah, blah. And in a way, coming from fear, I kind of was entertaining that thought, whether it be delusions of grandeur or paranoia, I entertained that thought until I got the email that we flooded the server we were on and it broke and we had to be moved to a larger server. The channel is now upgraded. It turned out to be good news. It's Great. It turned out to be great news. I didn't know. I don't know how it works over there, but they have different servers for different things. And the channel boop, broke that server, not physically, yeah. but it, it glitched out. So what we thought was paranoid, it turned out to be paranoid delusion. It turned out to be great news. So, uh, and YouTube was like, yeah, you're fucking killing it. You've been here for seven months and we got to, we got to move you up here. And I was like, dude, nobody's trying to get us, you know, but if we thought, if we think that, and I didn't check it, I didn't find out what the answer was, I'd be paranoid. And then I would attract more of that, you know? So, and, and yeah, you, you, as you had said, becoming, you tune in to it, as I have said many times, lean into it instead of avoiding it, instead of, uh, having the fight or flight response to it, uh, neither fight or flight, you lean into it and you might find out that this is good news. The silver lining is there and it's a, and it's a beautiful thing to embrace, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and I made a coffee. <laughs> You're going to laugh at me, sir. To commemorate what we thought was paranoia, I, I made a coffee mug dedicated to that particular video, which uh, I love very much. And it's totally, by the way, materialism, but it's fun, you know. No, it's, I'm, a, I'm a double Leo. I love aesthetics. <laughs> yes. I, 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 I dice out my entire videos with all kinds of graphics and fun. I know I saw your RGB glitch. I was like, Hey, <laughs> I don't want to do that. It, it makes it fun. It makes it fun. You know? So I, I get a, I, I get two levels of high whenever I'm researching something. I hesitate to say research. I read the books of researchers in the comfort of my own home. And then I talk shit. I don't, I research. I don't know. But uh, I get a level of, wow, this information is important and I'm going to bring it to the world and it makes me feel great. And then while I'm editing, I add all these fun things to them and that brings me a second level of high. And then, of course, as I said before, the self-doubt sets in right before premiere time and I want to delete everything. But, you know, <laughs> that's, it's all part of the process, you know. Um, all right. So can I bring us to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get one question here for you. This might not be your cup of tea actually, but Let's it was. Try. all right. This person says it turns out chemtrails are real. They're spraying aluminum and the conspiracies often come true. This is from Monica B eight series of numbers. I thought we knew that. 
I think a lot of us did know it, but the well, I think what she means is mainstream, the main, uh, uh, the normal person, typical person does not not only know about chemtrails, but if you tell them about them, we'll call it a conspiracy theory. However, they have said that they are trying to stop global warming by spraying aluminum into the atmosphere. And we all know that aluminum is a neurotoxin. That's not part of her question. Other ones too. There's it's right. more. Yeah, there's um, other ones, but uh, basically, there's that. But then, you know, there's levels to this. You have people who are totally at that level to where. Have you ever seen that meme of that like mind that starts off with something small, then it gets bigger, then it gets yes. bigger? Right. Yeah, like the people who are at the top of that are going. It's not even chemtrails. It's contrails. I see. I see. Okay. There's an irony to this. So, so then they're going, but, but if it's contrails and that's showing something of a much more universal shift going on. So it's both, it's both it's chemtrails, but it's also contrails. Contrails are when it's like, why is the atmosphere now showing like, like our atmosphere has changed and it's, to us at least, or maybe I should only speak for myself, but I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, we know that because in mysticism and in esotericism, it's the study of the changes of the ages. So all of the things that are going on in the air right now that are organic, let's call it organic. Uh, so there's chemtrails, that's not organic, but we know that. There's contrails going on and that would be organic. That's showing something in our atmosphere is definitely changing. And contrails is one of the things and there's other ones and this I really don't want to get into. But um, there's different things that happen to your atmosphere, like weather and other things that are showing not that. Yeah, don't get me wrong. The there's a lot of harm to the environment that we have done with our selfish, selfish, absorbed perception. But also, these are like the classic features that I think I don't, the funny part is I don't know Graham Hancock's work, but I just intuitively like him a lot. My intuition says I like him a lot. But I feel like if there's anyone, and now I'm just going off of sheer gnosis, I have no clue what I'm saying. Um, I feel like uh, my intuition wants to say that Graham Hancock would be a really great resource to go to for explaining the math behind what I'm saying. But the math is saying there's very defining features as to when an age is wrapping up. One of them is getting hotter. And that interesting. Hotter, one of them is getting hotter. A lot of different things happen to the air, which is why we see contrails, which is why really awakened people say they're not chemtrails. And then they forget the things they learned at the prior stages of their awakening. Um, all these different things are both like everything else you'll see in this reality. There's organic, natural things happening mixed with synthetic. And okay. Our it's job both. would be now. I'm turning this into a spiritual thing. Now I don't even remember what the question. No, no, you you took the question to the to to a higher level. That's why you're on the show. Please, by all means. So, yeah. our task, let's call it, is to be able to discern the organicness in things as well as the syntheticness. I'm writing a book on this right now, so yeah. it would be. What's the, what's the book called? Uh, the book you of the body. The book of the body. I any. Do you have a release date at all in mind? No, or? I don't have that stuff yet. But yeah, book Put of me the on body. The list. I cannot. I can't wait to. I can't wait. Yeah. So understanding, we have a synthetic quality and an organic quality. Synthetic. What I mean by that is a socially engineered qualities to things, and then just natural, organic humanity imbued into everything. And a lot of times we get hyper vigilant and we lose all sense of the discernment coming from the heart that's when we really start getting we can't see anything organic happening in the world any of the transformative or, or processes happening we start becoming narcissists viewing other people's processes or their own journeys through a very narcissistic lens this happens on every scale the reason i'm bringing this up is because when we're looking 
even at the things happening to the sky, it's also sometimes we get, we only see one facet of it. And I'm somebody who has healed multiple autoimmunity. If there's one person who will tell you, hey, we need to stop having crap in the sky. I, I've, I've, I'm not blaming my autoimmunity on that, but it sure as heck when you're already in a state of trying to heal, it does worry you when you see yeah. things happening in the sky. Cause you're like, great, I'm trying to heal this and I can't even breathe, breathe without worrying about that. But what I want to really highlight is the fact that there's things going on that are always happening at really multidimensional layers. So we might pick up one layer and that's fine. Master that layer, but also try to look deeper once you've mastered it. Cause you can't process all the information at once. So don't try to, but once you've, once you've seen a layer, once you can make peace with the layer, you'll, you'll notice that there's usually another layer because everything is multidimensional. I, this. Okay. So I, this is why I think that you are considered an authoritative personality on YouTube because what you just did was, especially with the meme analogy, was you illustrated clearly that there's levels to this that are not perceived by, okay, you've got people who are, there's no such thing as chemtrails, you're paranoid. And then you've got people, they're spraying aluminum into the environment to poison our pineal glands. And then you've got people going, well, it's a little bit of both and we have to stop, blah, blah, blah. And you're over here shaking them going, stop. Look at the biggest picture that you can and ask yourself, what part of the process are we in right now that would either a cause these things to happen, the purpose behind them, and where we're going from that. And it, that is, in a way, the way you answer a lot of these questions are not in physical reality. They, You're answering these questions in such a way that it is looking at the problem from a sidereal point of view. You, we're not, you don't seem to look at things. If I put my hand right here, I can't focus on it because it's, it's blurry right now. It's too close to my, it's too close to my face. However, when you scope out, uh, you can see the entire hand. And that's what you seem to insist upon with almost every subject, even with your videos that I've, I, I, that I've seen. And that's incredibly invaluable because, uh, it, as you said in the beginning of this talk, people have this tunnel vision. And it doesn't matter what rabbit hole they go down. It could even be Gnosis, Freemasonry, chemtrails, all of the above, DMT, aliens. If you are looking at it like this, you are going to, in a way, fall for it. But if you take a couple steps back, and you put it in context with everything else around it, well, then a pattern starts to take place. And if you recognize that pattern and integrate that into, you know, who you are or who we are, then a clearer picture certainly begins to emerge. And that might be the only way that we can find answers. Because if someone wants to stop let's say so-called chemtrails, they might throw up, you know, uh, uh, petition signs or whatever, or write letters to their governor or make a meme or uh, in any many facet of ways, throw a fit that in a way works you backwards very often. But when you look at the entire thing, it seems to, the, the question seems to answer itself. And that in, a, that, in a way, is very zen, uh, like, almost like a koan. Is how, that's how you answer these questions, as if it's a koan. And, uh, and that's, that, that's, that's a little bit of poetry in itself, you know? And I think that reminds us that we don't, not only do we not have the answers that, uh, that we're looking for, but by looking for the answers, we might be fucking ourselves. Pardon my French. I've always been able to gain peace through clarity. So 
the way that I could spiritualize that, I know that that's like the opposite. I wish I could tell you like, no, I'm just peace. I'm the opposite. I'm, I, I, I am a no, like I, like I, I'm a truth seeker. No. And so right. how I spiritualize that is the path of Yana, J A N A, you know, the, yo- the different yogas, there's the path of devotion. Mine's the path of knowing. So, okay. but I'm at a certain point now to where I've reached a certain level of sovereignty, inner clarity, inner authority, whatever you have it, that now I don't have to know everything to feel peace. So I I don't want to present myself as though I'm somebody that's just chill because I've always been a truth seeker and I'm a person that wants to know. I, I want to know. But right. I'm now, at least I could say, at a level of my journey or a level of my growth to where um, I trust my own sight and I trust my own formulas. And so I'm open and I don't know everything, but I, I don't freak out anymore because I know enough to know that when I need to know something, that will be the new journey and the new right. journey of Narnia. You, you let it come to you. Like, like Joseph Campbell said, uh, follow your bliss when he followed his curiosity, it wasn't that he wanted to scrape together all of the answers and have it all figured out. He studied mythology. That was his thing. And he did his damnedest not to paint his own answers onto mythology, knowing that these people had a completely different mindset than he, than he did. And so when he says as a truth seeker, To follow your bliss does not necessarily mean to scrape for answers, but to just follow the the answers wherever they they may come, whether it's like synchronicities or uh, you know these these channeling and whatnot or intuition, you know, for example. And uh, and that's I think that's that's important as a as a truth seeker. I know the word truth seeker is almost stereotypical now. Yeah, now I know it means something else too, and I don't mean it that way, but you get what I mean. Yes, I 100%. It, it, it's one of those things where like, you know, uh, someone who wants to investigate 9-11 calls themselves a, a truth seeker. And then the yeah. word... The word be- that way, but I, I've had, when I've said it before, I've had people go, hey, you know that there's a whole community and you really shouldn't. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forget. Every time I say something, there's something already that that's a part of. Yeah, that's impossible to avoid. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, shoot. I'll tell you this, Sarah. um, I think this is what we what you just touched upon. What we just touched upon, I think, is a perfect point to end this uh, to end this talk. My phone's going dead. I'm at 12%. And uh, if someone's into numerology out there, maybe they can uh, decipher that one. But uh, I'm kidding. But uh, if you don't mind, let's do this again sometime. I can't yeah, wait for your newest video. And uh, and perhaps after uh, each of us have 3 million subscribers, we can go celebrate by having a beer at Applebee's. And, uh, <laughs> And you can repri- reprimand me for having the uh, the mozzarella cheese sticks because oh, man. they're delicious. You can have as many beers. Please just don't make me watch you eat mozzarella sticks. The string is so long and cheesy. What am I supposed to do? All right. I'm going to work on my diet just for you, okay? And I'm going to work on my judgment of diet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Don't. But if you choose to, feel free. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today and I I appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye.